The U.S. Navy spent years chasing the promise of electromagnetic railguns. High-velocity, low-cost firepower that could outpace rising missile threats. But after pouring hundreds of millions into the effort, the program collapsed under technical weight, leaving the Navy without the very capability it once called the future. Japan saw that gap differently. Instead of walking away, Tokyo refined the concept, slowed the pace, and focused on making the technology survivable at sea. Now they're the first to produce a railgun that not only fires reliably, but has proven itself in real maritime trials. Let's take a look on why the U.S. abandoned the idea and how Japan is turning it into a working weapon. The United States Navy began serious development of electromagnetic railguns in the early 2000s with the goal of fielding a long-range, high-velocity weapon that relied solely on electrical energy rather than chemical propellants. The program managed jointly by the Office of Naval Research and BAE Systems, later joined by General Atomics, aimed to produce a system capable of launching projectiles at speeds exceeding Mach 7 from distances greater than 100 nautical miles. By 2007, laboratory tests at the Naval Surface Warfare Center Dahlgren Division had achieved muzzle energies of 32 megajoules, and by 2010 the weapon had demonstrated repeated firings with consistent velocities above 5,400 miles per hour. The primary advantages were clear. Projectiles cost a fraction of guided missiles, required no explosive fill, produced no visible muzzle signature, and could be stored in large numbers. Planned integration focused initially on the Zumwalt-class destroyers, which were designed with sufficient electrical generation capacity to support the weapon's pulsed power requirements. Sea trials were repeatedly scheduled and postponed, with the joint high-speed vessel Millinocket and later an Arleigh Burke-class destroyer proposed as test platforms. However, a series of technical obstacles proved difficult to overcome at the desired scale. Rail and armature erosion limited barrel life to fewer than 100 full energy shots in most configurations. The pulsed power system demanded peak currents in the millions of amperes, requiring massive capacitor banks and complex switching architecture. Thermal management, electromagnetic interference with shipboard sensors, and the physical size of the supporting equipment all complicated integration into existing hulls. By 2021, after expending approximately $500 million, the Navy terminated the program and redirected funding toward hypersonic missiles and directed energy weapons. Railguns, that sci-fi savior of sea power, seemed destined for the scrap heap of what-ifs. Or so we thought. Because while Uncle Sam was folding his hand, a quiet powerhouse on the other side of the world was just getting warmed up. The Japanese Maritime Self-Defense Force has been eyeballing railguns since the early 2010s, but it wasn't until the U.S. pulled the plug that Tokyo really leaned in. Why? Simple. Geography. Japan is an island chain ringed by potential flashpoints. Think a resurgent China with carrier killer missiles, North Korean hypersonic streaking over the horizon, and Russia's Pacific fleet flexing just north of Hokkaido. In that neighborhood, you don't win with yesterday's tech. You need something that can swat down salvos without breaking the bank or the ship. While the U.S. effort ended, Japan's Acquisition Technology and Logistics Agency, ATLA, continued its parallel railgun research that had begun in earnest around 2016. The Japanese program adopted a more measured approach, prioritizing component durability and gradual velocity increases over the pursuit of maximum muzzle energy in the shortest possible time frame. Early Japanese tests were conducted at land-based facilities in the Tokyo area using a 40 mm bore prototype. By 2022, the system was achieving projectile velocities of 4,500 to 5,000 miles per hour with barrel lives exceeding 120 full power shots. In 2023, ATLA reported incremental improvements in rail coatings and armature materials that extended service life to more than 200 shots while maintaining velocity consistency. 
In mid-2025, the prototype was installed aboard the research vessel J.S. Aska for the first open-sea firing trials. The installation consisted of four standard 20-foot ISO containers housing the railgun, capacitor bank, charging system, and cooling plant. Power was supplied by commercial generators temporarily embarked for the test series rather than the ship's own electrical plant, allowing engineers to focus on maritime-specific issues such as platform motion, salt-air corrosion, and electromagnetic compatibility. The target for the trials was an unmanned former civilian tug towed at a range of several miles. Projectiles were fin-stabilized darts launched inside a discarding sabot. Multiple engagements were conducted using both depressed and elevated trajectories to collect data on atmospheric effects over water and to validate the fire control solution under realistic conditions. Later, in November 2025, at the Defense and Security Equipment International Exhibition in Japan, ATLA released the first detailed imagery of the test results. Photographs showed multiple penetrations through the tug's steel hull plating, with entry holes clustered tightly enough to indicate good dispersion. Characteristic cross-shaped damage patterns were visible where the four stabilizing fins made initial contact before the projectile body entered. Internal bulkheads were perforated, and fragments of the aluminum sabot were embedded in surrounding structure. No explosive warhead was used. All damage resulted from kinetic energy alone. Current Japanese projectiles are launched at approximately 5,100 miles per hour, or roughly Mach 6.7 at sea level. Muzzle energy is lower than the peak values achieved by the former U.S. program, but the sustained rate of fire and barrel longevity are significantly improved. Charging time between shots has been reduced to under one minute in laboratory conditions, though sea trials operated at longer intervals for data collection. ATLA officials have stated that the primary near-term challenge remains the development of compact, ship-compatible, pulsed power systems capable of rapid recharge from a destroyer's integrated electric propulsion plant. Secondary efforts focus on further extending barrel life and increasing velocity toward 5,500 to 6,200 miles per hour while maintaining repeatability. The JMSDF views the railgun as a complement to existing missile-based defenses rather than an immediate replacement. Potential roles include long-range anti-surface warfare, suppression of enemy shore batteries, and cost-effective engagement of saturation missile attacks when magazine depth becomes critical. The compact containerized design demonstrated aboard Asuka also suggests possible future deployment on smaller vessels or land-based coastal defense sites. They're not alone, either. Last year, Atle inked a deal with the Franco-German ISL Institute for tech swaps. China? They've been at it since the 80s with whispers of a prototype on a Type 055 destroyer. Turkey's Aselsan is turning heads with barrel breakthroughs and even India's dipping toes. And the U.S. is not out. Rumors swirl of classified reboots, maybe laser-rail hybrids. But Japan's leading the charge, proving that sometimes the student outpaces the master. So, what's next? The Japanese program is scheduled to continue sea trials through 2026, followed by integration studies with the Maya class and forthcoming 12D DX Aegis destroyers. A technology demonstrator capable of extended at sea operations is planned before the end of the decade. Ground based variants for fixed defense of the Ryukyu Island chain are under parallel consideration and may reach prototype status earlier. The recent imagery from the Asuka trials marks the first public confirmation that a naval railgun has successfully engaged and defeated a seaborne target since the termination of the American effort. While significant engineering hurdles remain, particularly in power generation and thermal management at full naval scale, the Japanese program has demonstrated that many of the problems that ended the U.S. project can be mitigated through iterative design and a willingness to accept more modest initial performance in exchange for reliability and longevity. The, the U.S. may have walked away from railguns in 2021, 
but the story clearly wasn't over. Maybe after Japan proved the idea still has a pulse, U.S. might come back to it. And what do you think about this? Share your thoughts in the comments below. And if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like it, subscribe to the channel, and turn on the notifications to always stay in touch. See you soon!